A wonderful sunny good morning. This is Process FM. It's a Saturday morning in October 1979, and you were looking forward to some breakfast. But you just ran out of milk, so you walk to your local grocery store looking for a new carton of milk. But the shelves are empty. There's no more fresh milk today. Of course, you try to find the store manager and ask for where the milk is. But all they have to say is... Well, it looks like we underestimated demand. The next shipment won't be here until next week. Back then, ensuring fresh milk was available was a manual process. Store managers would walk the aisles, check stock levels by eye, and then place orders by phone or fax. There was no real-time data, no automated tracking, just experience and gut instinct. And that means that sometimes they got it wrong. Let's do a fast forward to today. Now the entire supply chain is connected. Store managers can predict demand, automate orders, and optimize deliveries in real time. Having fresh milk in stock is nothing special anymore. This is the story of over 40 years of evolution in this field. From manual tracking, to workflow management, to process mining and now process intelligence. Welcome to Trust the Process. This is our podcast to demystify when processes work and when they don't. I'm your host, Angela, from the Salonis Academic Alliance. And today we will break down the evolution from process mining to process intelligence. In this episode, we'll hear from four experts who have each shaped the field. Will van der Alst is often called the godfather of process mining. Lars Rankemeyer and Patrick Lechner are both renowned for being process intelligence application specialists in larger enterprises like Siemens or BMW. And we will hear from process mining consultant Gabriella Gallek. Before we had process mining, how would businesses even understand their processes? Think back to our grocery store example. Back in the days, stores relied on simple observation and instinct. There were barely any IT systems. There was no centralized tracking. Just employees estimating demand and then placing orders. As businesses digitized, workflow management systems emerged. And the idea was simple. Model your process and then let the system ensure everything runs out as planned. But well, the reality was a little different. Let's hear from Will van der Alst. So in the mid 90s, there were many, let's say, tech organizations that were selling uh, workflow management systems there were around uh, 200 at the time. So really, it was a big field. And the basic idea of workflow management technology was that you model your processes, and then you push a button and you generate a system that is then ensuring that the process is executed as, as it is modeled. And of course, this is a bit naive. And, and that's why uh, we got into the field of process mining. Those systems promised to standardize operations. So you would model your process and then let the system ensure everything runs as planned. This obviously also had an impact on store operations. So our employees would follow a clearly modeled process of scanning the milk, stocking the milk, and then reporting back to the IT system. The theory was that if you could model your process, everything would work out exactly as it was designed. Yeah, so in, in the beginning where people were applying workflow management technology, they had this idea, we just model the processes and after modeling the processes, you push a button and you generate a system that is then making sure that the processes are executed as, as they are modeled. But this was not happening. And uh, that was for me the trigger to start working on, on process mining, where you don't start from modeling, you start from the actual data and the actual processes as they are being executed. Process mining reveals the gap between theory and reality. So how does it actually work? For that, let's go back to our grocery store example. Every time a carton of milk is scanned, when it arrives, when it's stocked and when it's sold, that data gets logged. Process mining takes those digital breadcrumbs, timestamps, locations, the act of being put on the shelf or bought at the checkout 
and pieces them together to show the real process of stock replenishment. Say, milk keeps running low every Friday afternoon. Process mining helps pinpoint the cause. Maybe deliveries are late. Maybe demand spikes at a certain time. Before that, store managers had to rely on a mix of rudimentary maths and a good dash of gut feeling. Now they can see exactly what's happening and fix it. That was the spark that launched process mining as a field. Fast forward, it's now a recognized Gartner category with a massive global community driving it forward every day. I'm actually surprised that it took such a long time uh, to be visible. And I think even today, there are many organizations that are not aware of the fact that process mining exists. And there are all these wonderful things that you can do. Process mining gave us something like an X-ray vision into business operations. But as the technology evolved, process mining itself was shaped by other innovations. After this break, we'll take a look at the tech forces that pushed the field forward. AI's got a trash problem. It's getting garbage in, so it's putting a lot of garbage out. AI is powerful, but it's only as good as the processes and data it's working with. That's why at Salonis, we make processes work and give AI the data and context it needs, like rules, benchmarks, and KPIs, so it knows what makes something good or bad for business. And AI can go from letdown to breakthrough. Search Salonis, C-E-L-O-N-I-S, to make AI work. So process mining changed the game. It showed businesses how their processes actually run. And over the years, new technologies emerged that influenced the field further. I've spoken to Gabriela Gallic from Ofi Consulting Services, and Gabi gave me a little history lesson on how process mining has changed over the years. 2012, big data was a big hype where we were relying on massive data sets, which also supported process mining even more because we can analyze more data, so to say. And then afterwards, uh, we stepped into cloud computing, right, where it helped us basically to um, be more flexible, to be more affordable, right, and to also be more accessible um, to everybody and that more people are using process mining. And right afterwards, um, the trend of RPA came into place which was a perfect match to process mining because then we are not only started to analyze processes but at the same time we had a solution to fix inefficiencies and to um, improve our processes with bots. Big data was the first thing to take things to the next level. Our grocery store is now a global chain and they're tracking millions of transactions in real time to spot trends, optimize stock and cut waste. The next thing that happened was cloud computing. Suddenly, store managers could monitor and tweak supply chains from anywhere. They could make sure that shelves stayed stocked with exactly what customers needed. Later on with RPA, grocery stores moved from understanding inefficiencies to actively resolving them. For example, our store managers could monitor stock levels and trigger automatic restocking. RPM, process mining or process intelligence are working very well together. First of all, with process intelligence, you're, of course, able to give transparency to the process, to identify bottlenecks in your process. And RPA helps basically to um, yeah, improve your processes by automating some of the workflows, which are manual, right? So the first step with process mining, you can identify manual reworks and RPA helps you basically to fix those small manual reworks and automate them. Exactly. Process mining ensures you automate the good stuff, not the bad. It helps you focus automation on high impact areas while avoiding inefficiencies. Next up, with the rise of no-code and low-code platforms, process optimization was no longer limited to technical experts alone. The democratization of all the tools with low-code, no-code developments, it was also possible for people who are not that tech savvy or who doesn't have like deep tech skills to really um, improve their processes with low-code, no-code platforms or developments. And this really gave another boost um, or enhancement for process intelligence. Grocery store managers without deep IT knowledge could now build custom workflows to streamline operations. For example, a store manager could create a dashboard to track perishable inventory levels 
and trigger discount promotions for items nearing their expiration dates. And all of that without needing a developer. I would say the day-to-day -day of our grocery store operations and process consultants has drastically changed. And process mining is about to be changed again. Moving from process mining towards process intelligence. And there's been a heated debate. Some call it the next evolution. Others say it's just a new label. After this break, we'll find out. Imagine your dream role in process excellence, business analytics, or digital transformation just one click away. Introducing ProcessMiningJobs.com, where top talent meets top opportunity. Whether you're searching for your next big move or looking to hire the best in the business, this is where careers accelerate and teams level up. Because the future of work is all about matching minds and markets. Explore opportunities and discover what's next at ProcessMiningJobs.com. AI collided with our working lives with the rise of ChatGPT. Suddenly, we are all using it to write emails, plan out alternate endings to our favorite TV shows, as well as experiment with how to make it work at work. Process intelligence naturally joined the process mining stable. But how novel do we really think it is? Let's listen to Will. So the term process intelligence has been around for quite a while. I think the, the big uh, innovation is the inclusion of AI technologies and machine learning. So you can see process intelligence as process mining, incorporating ideas from machine learning and AI. Process intelligence is more than just an upgraded version of process mining. It's a complete solution leveraging process insights at an AI-ready level. Real process intelligence therefore includes process mining, task mining, process modeling, digital twin technology, and of course, AI. AI helps us to not only understand past performance, but also plan for the future. For predictive AI, you also need to have training data. And how do you get the training data for that uh, process mining and process intelligence is essential. For example, uh, you first use process mining to identify the fact that you have a bottleneck and then you want to analyze that bottleneck in detail. And then using process mining, you're generating the training data that is needed for the predictive AI uh, technique. And then, for example, you can start predicting when this bottleneck uh, can happen. Our grocery store can now improve supply chain logistics by coordinating deliveries with predictive analytics. Process intelligence can forecast demand based on weather patterns, local events, or historical sales data, ensuring that the right amount of fresh produce is always stocked. And that's exactly the shift that BMW has made. Patrick Lechner is the one who's seen it firsthand. Over the past decade, he's watched BMW evolve from simple process discovery towards real-time intelligent process optimization. He explains how they move from simply seeing processes to actively improving them. Well, here at BMW, we started very simple with simple discoveries. So we wanted to understand our processes better. And this was a very important step for us at the beginning. But then soon we looked into how can we improve our processes together with our experts. Um, and this was an expert tool then that was used by a couple of, of, of users, um, not very large yet. But next step, and this was when we moved into the cloud version of Salonis, we managed to make it an execution management tool. So we had much many, many more users who used the tool to improve their processes, to act with the process and to interact um, with the process. And that's where the real payoff happens. Insight alone doesn't move the needle. Action does. At Siemens, Lars Reinkemeyer experienced firsthand that visualizing a process is not enough. The real value only comes in from what you do with those insights. For me, definitely, it's a big step forward. The key difference is that process mining, as it says mining, is focusing on the insight. So you mine a process to visualize how the process actually goes. You mine the process to say, on my purchase to pay process, I have 100,000 of process variations, which has been a great thing, which we did in the last first couple of years at Siemens, visualizing the transparency, showing an X-ray. But that's not what it's about. It's not about the insight. 
but it is about the action which you trigger and it's the value which you bring to the organization. And it's been a key learning for me that in the beginning I was so focused on inside only, but then, well, what did it change? What impact did I have on the CMS share? And that's where process intelligence for me is completely different. Since process intelligence insinuates that you're looking intelligently how to improve processes, how to drive process to be more efficient, more automated. So in that respect, you bring certain automation parts in there, standardization parts in there, and, a, and a, an approach of executing process is much more intelligent. And in that respect, for me, it's a whole different game to process mining. To me, process intelligence is definitely more than just a label. Process intelligence is the next evolution of process mining. Process mining showed us what's happening, whereas process intelligence helps us predict and improve in real time. Process intelligence, when done right, connects everything in a business. It brings together system data, process knowledge, and AI to understand how your business works. That's how processes get improved so they work and real value gets created. Let's take our grocery store example again. Process mining flags delivery delays and demand spikes. But process intelligence, it's the smart connective tissue that knows your business inside out and predicts when milk will run low and reorders before shelves are even empty. That maximizes store efficiency, customer satisfaction and company revenue. Talking about knowing your business inside out, AI is not the only trend that has triggered the rise of a new process intelligence era. So-called object-centric process mining provides large contextual information which feeds into our AI-driven decision-making and makes it more accurate. Using object-centric process mining, you're, for example, able to analyze if you're unable to deliver your customers in time, what are the root causes? The root causes can be in the sales department, they can be in production, they can be in logistics. And using object-centric process mining, you are able to look at all the objects involved and how they are interacting with each other. And you are able to find, for example, that your root cause is not in sales, but is actually in production or procurement. We'll hear more about this in future episodes. But the problems that have kept our grocery store manager up at night have changed. There's no more guessing when milk will run out. There's no more reacting to late. Today, process intelligence doesn't just track what's happening, it predicts what will happen and acts before issues even arise. It's the difference between waiting for an empty shelf to be filled and ensuring it's always stocked. Even beyond prediction and automation, process intelligence enables AI by providing real-time monitoring and context. Without PI, AI lacks the insights it needs to drive meaningful decisions, making their relationship sort of essential. And because PI continuously feeds AI with live process data, it enhances the ability of AI to refine those predictions. That ensures that businesses like our grocery store stay ahead of challenges even before they arise. Join us on the next episode of Trust the Process as we explore why AI without process intelligence is like navigating with an outdated map and how real-time business context is the key to making that map truly work. Because when processes work, everything works. <laughs>